my name is Vashik and welcome to my channel and in this video I would like to explore the question that I was asked many times and that is where to start reading Nietzsche. Although I am no expert on Nietzsche, I am one of those weird people who can read Nietzsche during his lunch breaks and when my colleagues saw me carrying a volume of Nietzsche in my hands, they usually ask me whether it is difficult to read Nietzsche and the second question that they ask is which book I would recommend to start reading Nietzsche in general. And I always struggled with coming up with the answer to this question because when I ask the same question to my friends who studied art, philosophy or aesthetics, they usually pointed to Nietzsche's Birth of Tragedy which is his first work. But when I asked my friend who is a poetry lover, she quickly pointed out and said that the best place Place to start Nietzsche is Thus Spoke Zarathustra. For a long time I used to recommend uh, Sue Prido's brilliant biography of Nietzsche that is called I'm Dynamite. Sue Prido is an incredible writer. She has uh, this magical ability of immersing the reader into the life of Nietzsche and looking at their world through the Nietzsche's eyes. But I thought that it would be really difficult for someone who is not familiar with Nietzsche to start with uh, 350 pages about his life. For a long time I was thinking if I could ask someone to write a book on Nietzsche that would be perfect for let's say the beginners, how would I describe it to them? And I thought that a great book on Nietzsche should have three qualities. First of all, it has to provide a sort of a biography of Nietzsche. It is very important to understand what Nietzsche went through and how his works came to be through his own experiences. The second quality that a good book on Nietzsche should have is that it should give an overview of the key works of Nietzsche. What were they about? What are the key ideas? And the third quality from this list was this book has to connect Nietzsche's ideas to our own time. What would Nietzsche think if he was born today instead of like 150 years ago? I believe I found a book that combines those three key elements and I found it uh, by accident at the Blackwell bookshop uh, at the University of Oxford. And this book is called Hiking with Nietzsche. It was written by Professor John Gag. What makes this book unique from thousands of books that were written about Nietzsche already is that it's written through the lens of a memoir. Kag tells his story of how, when he was a student of philosophy at the age of 19, he traveled to Switzerland to a small town called Sils Maria, where Nietzsche spent many years of his life hiking and exploring the Swiss nature. He wanted to see where Nietzsche wrote his key works, but he went through a severe depression as I mentioned. He lost a lot of weight, he couldn't sleep, and when he returned back to the US, his own mother Mother couldn't recognize him because he looked so exhausted and he lost so much weight. He traveled back two decades after with his wife and his daughter and on his second trip Karg continues to follow the footsteps of Nietzsche and he tells the story of Nietzsche about his life, what he has done and how he came up with those ideas. And since Karg tells all of this through his own uh, perspective, through the lens of his own struggles, this makes Nietzsche's ideas incredible incredibly contemporary. There are three kind of key ideas that I keep thinking ever since I read Kag's book that I would like to share with you. Kag mentions that many great philosophical ideas didn't come up with um, those philosophers sitting in front of their desks covered with books etc but many ideas came to them when they were walking from Stoics to medieval thinkers to Rousseau, Schopenhauer and Nietzsche himself many great thinkers came up with their ideas when they were in motion when they were walking I know that it sounds like a very simple idea that everyone should practice but we often forget how important are those periods of stillness the second thing that Kag points out is that Nietzsche's life was essentially his struggle between um, his seclusion, his solitude and his interaction with the rest of the world. And Nietzsche writes and explores a lot in his own works that it is very important to have those elements of stillness and solitude and be excluded from the society and from the crowd in order to have your own individual identity, in order not to become the part of the crowd. But at the same time 
time Nietzsche knew that his ideas will be pointless if they are not communicated with the crowd. And of course he explores this in the beginning of his Thus Spoke Zarathustra when Zarathustra comes down from his mountain and tries to interact with the, with the people. Writing through the lens of his memoir and through his own experiences, Kag explores how we can apply this idea in our world where everything is a mass product, where individuality is very rare, when everyone is a copy of a copy of a copy. The third idea actually is connected with the previous one, but it is more about parenting. Gag writes that when we become parents, we surrender part of ourselves, we surrender a part of our identity. And when we become parents, we try to dedicate ourselves to children fully. But everyone who is a parent knows that there is a strong desire to keep your own individuality, your own personality after you become a parent. And one of the beautiful ideas that Nietzsche expressed as Kag mentions in his book, is that it is inevitable for us to surrender part of our identity um, to bigger causes such as being a parent. And essentially when we surrender a part of our identity, we gain a new one. It's like snake shedding his skin to get a new one. And of course it is very difficult for me to delve into this idea of surrendering your identity in order to gain a new one uh, in a single 10 minute video, but I believe that um, explanation is unnecessary sometimes. Sometimes it's your own reflection about the idea about a single sentence that can reveal more to you rather than explanation of someone else. I wanted to make this short video right after reading John Kag's book that I loved so much. When I record or write videos about the books that profoundly influenced me right after reading them, um, the memories, the impressions are still fresh and I believe that it makes reflections more genuine. I hope you really like this video. I hope it will be very useful for you. As I said, uh, Hiking with Nietzsche is a brilliant book uh, for those who want to encounter Nietzsche for the first time. But I believe that even people who read all the books of Nietzsche uh, will find this to be a very entertaining read. As I said, I used to recommend a lot this brilliant biography of Nietzsche by Sue It's called I'm Dynamite. It is an amazing book. I won't, you won't regret reading it. And the final advice that I would give that not in any circumstance start reading Nietzsche with his book called Ege Homo. It is not a good place to start. Uh, Nietzsche has chapters such as why I write such great books, why I'm such a great philosopher. It is a very strange book and it might put you off from reading Nietzsche, so don't start with there. Um, the final thing that I wanted to mention is that you can find all my notes from John Kag's books and many other books on my website. I'll link it down below. I read all the books with a pencil in my hand, so I highlight my favorite passages, references to other books, uh, favorite quotes. Thanks a lot once again and I'll see you in the next one.